everyone, Luke Hobbs here, the guitar auctioneer at Garden Hoggett Auction Rooms in Caution, Wiltshire, UK. And today we're going to have a quick look around the sale room for our auction that's taking next week on the 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th of September. Um, it's another massive sale. We've got 1,600-ish lots, a bit less now because there is, a, there is an announcement um, that a lot of you have already heard, um, some things that have been pulled out of the sale. But... Um, yeah, massive sell. We're going to have a look around um, as quickly as we can. Famous last words, but I'll try and make this brief as we've got a lot to do. We're <laughs> cracking on with condition reports at the moment, but um, we will get through this as quick as we can. There is the sale catalogue. So the official book, the wedge um, the, the for the tome. auction, <laughs> the tome, the four day auction um, that's taking place next week. Um, you'll see on the front cover the 58V that we've got coming up, very exciting. Um, a few more um, facts and information that we've actually received only today about the provenance of this guitar, which is quite exciting. It always, always happens last minute, but um, one of the previous owners has come forward who actually owned the guitar from 1967. Um, so we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, and you'll also see on the cover... The Bernie Marsden collection. Now, if you haven't heard already, um, which I'm sure most of you have, Bernie sadly passed away last week. So after discussions with the family, I had a chat with the family earlier um, when we returned after the bank holiday this week, and we've decided that we would like to postpone the sale out of respect for Bernie. Um, Bernie was a a huge figure in the in the guitar community um he was um he was a personal friend of mine i've known him for a very long time i've known him for 10 years um he came started coming to the auctions like i said around 10 years ago when i met him um turned up to the auctions and we always got on very very well um i i personally had uh, a lot of uh great guitar banter with him via text um we probably spoke we must have spoke at least once every one or two months um just bernie would either call me up and ask for advice on things that he's seen and wanting to buy and you know is it a good deal and and this that and the other and, and, and vice versa i'd i'd sort of uh get advice from bernie um he was a great ambassador for the auctions he'd always recommend us um he's entrusted us or had entrusted us with this second sale as well as the first one a few years ago when we sold his lockup of all his amps um so it's been a, it's been a complete privilege to know bernie um like most people say he was one of the friendliest guys he had a lot of time for everyone um but i've never heard a bad word said about him you know um he was just one of those genuine guys like i said a lot of time for everyone um, I was always welcomed at his home as well um, when dropping by and uh, marvelling at some of his collection. Very lucky to play The Beast a few times, um, which I would say I've probably played, played 10 bursts in my, in my life. And I have to say that The Beast is the best one I've played. Um, that's not any bias at all. It really is. And a lot of people do say it's a fantastic guitar. Um, Joe Bonamassa, for one, of course, he's, he's used it live. And um, another guy who says it's, it is one of the best. So amazing guitar, amazing guitarist, um, very influential, wrote some amazing songs. Uh, White Snake wouldn't be who they were without him, you know, founding member and wrote most of their most iconic songs. Um, so, yeah. Um, so 28 lots were going to be in this sale, withdrawn from sale because of the very sad passing of Bernie. It is a postponement. We will be offering them in the future, um, but that will be a decision um, further down the line. Um, we need a period of, um, especially throughout this period of mourning, I guess you'd say, just to really reflect on him, um, his life and his career um, and then we can uh, we can get to a position where we can actually start thinking about making a decision, or certainly the family can start thinking about making a decision as to what they want to do in terms of future sale dates. Um, so obviously, as soon as we have a date, we will keep you updated. Um, all the guitars are still here, um, and um, they'll be well looked after while they're in our possession. And you know, obviously, we'll we'll bring them into a future auction. Could be later this year, maybe it'll be next year, but there will be no rush as as and when people are ready so 
Um, we'll have a quick look round now. I'm sure you're all looking at me waffling on a bit there, but I thought I would pay my tribute to the great man, Bernie Marsden. Um, and um, we'll have a look round, see what we've got coming up. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about individual things. We've done a lot of consignment updates where I've spoken about a lot of these things already. Um, so we'll just look around. I'll, I'll point out a few of my favourite things. Um, so uh, the, the things I might pick up may be a little bit biased because I will naturally be drawn to things that I think are really cool, um, which there are a lot of those things, but <laughs> let's, uh, let's get on with it. So from lot one, we are here. Um, we have Fender guitars, which is something that we're trying to keep um, as having these Fender and Gibson sections at the start, just because it, it draws people's focus. And, you know, we've got some, we've got some very good things in this cell. Um, these are the, these are the less, what we call less vulnerable guitars that aren't kept behind the cabinet area. Um, and yeah, we've got, we've got some lovely, we've got some custom shops here. Um, we've got a Jeff Beck Strat, um, a Fender Strat Plus. Really cool guitar with lace sensor pickups and humbucker pickups just in the corner there. Um, one of my favourite Telecaster models, the Barger Tele, um, in a really cool uh, lesser spotted blue finish. That is a um, special edition FSR run. Um, I'll just point out, the guitars that are led down, they are very, very safe. Um, you know, often people probably come into the cell room and think, you know, should we have guitars let down? They're absolutely fine. They're protected. They're clothed, um, and they're well looked after. So um, they're just as safe let down as they are on the stands. But obviously, we can accommodate more guitars, which is why we do it. But we'll never lean anything on its neck. You know, things like Gibsons, we'll never do that. So things like Fenders, they're very, very safe there on a on a good uh, padded blanket. So. That's the great thing with them, isn't it? Is they're the headstock never touches the table. So never touches the table. It's the body only. They've got a neck plate to help them as well. So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't like to start reading comments of people thinking we're not looking after guitars because we, we are. We really are. Um, so, um, yeah, um, we've got a Lacewood custom shop here. First one we've ever had. Um, just a really, really cool bit different. Um, yeah, when we opened the case of this one, it was just like, oh. Yeah. It's a really cool guitar. Jim Root Telly, for you heavy metalers out there, <clears throat> me. Um, <laughs> the um, big headstock Fender Custom Shop, um, sort of 69 spec that would be with the Reliking. That's a cool looking thing. Um, we've got the Eric Clapton Custom Shop Fender Strat there um, and a Jimi Hendrix Reverse Strat. Um, and yeah, Mark Knopfler. And we got some sort of uh, American vintage reissue um, and American standard guitars there. And continuing on down the Fender line, um, just lots and lots of great Fenders. Of course, you can go on our website, um, auctions.gardenerholgate.co.uk, and you'll see all of these guitars in the catalogue, um, full descriptions, estimates. We always encourage people to get condition reports. Please do get a condition report if you're interested in anything because, um, I mean, even we are finding when we're going around now doing condition reports, there's one or two minor things that we might have missed um, on initial inspection. And of course, we are very open and transparent about these guitars. We're not hiding anything. And actually, we would rather someone come and look in person. And um, we're going to be honest. If we think it's a bad guitar, we'll tell you will tell you it's a bad guitar if we think it's a good guitar or a great guitar we'll tell you myself and chris who's behind the camera we are both players we've both been guitarists for i mean i've i've played guitar for well over 25 years in chris i don't want to say doesn't want to say but probably <laughs> i should be i should be long. better than i am yeah. well yeah exactly i'm not i'm not i'm nowhere near as good as i should be but me and chris we've both been playing for a long time um definitely over 20 years for Chris and over 25 years for me so we know what we're doing with guitars um, so in terms of playability we can advise um, but do ask for a condition report it's very important because there always are I mean I've probably found five things today that I hadn't noticed before like I said there's always minor things it's never major things um, there have been in the past but you know that's that's <laughs> that's that's not bad when you sell 3,000 guitars a year I guess so um, but there, w there will be things, so please ask. We're always we're always very open, um, and if we don't think we should buy it, we will tell you. Um, so, 
like I said, Fender guitars here. Um, this is a cool one of the Helicaster Gold Leaf Telecasters um, with the, or well, it's a Jazzercaster um, with the hip shot tailpiece Jazzmaster pickups with these bigger, uh, big bolts. These are Seymour Duncan's actually, who are well known. They have these big bolts in the Invader pickups as well, um, known on the Tom DeLonge Strat, which is the best guitar model ever, um, <laughs> in my opinion. Recently um, reissued. We recently reissued. If yeah. you'd like to donate one to yeah. Luke Hobbs. I'm, I'm not on commission from Fender. No, <laughs> no way. No. Um, I do not. I do not do anything like that. Um, we've got a Johnny Marr. Jaguar, very nice it is too, a 66 Coronado, um, and yeah, that pretty much covers most of the fenders that are out in the wild, so to speak, out in the sale room, um, Cabernita, um, and various other things. Um, and then this is our cabinet, cabinet area, where we keep the more expensive or vulnerable things, so you'll see naturally um, some more expensive things on this rack near the cabinet area, which is which is heavily staffed and heavily controlled. Um, so we've got the HLE um, early custom shop gold strat just here. Um, the Fender Performer, um, which is um, which is what we believe, or we're led to believe, um, and John Page seems to believe the designer of the guitar um, with the maple board. You'll see the stock model here. So from the same year, this one, 1985, only made for a year um, with the rosewood board, but this is the only one we think that exists with a maple board. So it could be a sample. It doesn't have a serial number on the back of the head. Um, so all these things make us believe that it is a prototype um, example. So very rare indeed. And then we've got a David Gilmore strap, which I'm sure you all know is the small whammy black strap maple board. Um, this is the, the, I guess you call it the NOS one rather than the exact replica. Um, yeah, and some other cool, this is actually one of my favourite Telecasters, just because I love matching headstocks. It's a really great weight, Fender Custom Shop. Um, that's a cool thing. So as you can see, the cabinet area, very secured guitars. Um, so this is one of the Fender Custom Shop um, guitars that they did for the anniversary. So these were made um, as a replica using all the old machinery of the first Stratocasters in 54. Um, so this is a Dennis Galutska made one. And it's a really cool thing. You know, the spec wise comes of the additional um, period type case, um, as well as the other protector case, all the paperwork's there as well. But yeah, it's a nice thing. 73 strap, which is just in unbelievable condition. There's some checking to the finish, um, but just look at it. It's like it's just fresh out of the factory, isn't fresh. it? Box fresh, <laughs> box fresh. Box fresh. Box fresh, but it doesn't have a case, so not case fresh. <laughs> um, so this was this is a fifty year old guitar, and look at it. I mean, it's it's in better condition than me, <laughs> and I'm younger. It's got twenty years on me as yeah. well. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm I'm in my very late thirties. So yeah, it's just not looking bad, is it? it? Certainly looks a lot better than me. But um, yeah, there we go. Really nice example, and we have a video demo of this up on our website. Um, on our YouTube, should I say? Do we have a video demo of this one? I'm pretty sure we do, yeah. Because pretty... there's there's a few seventy strats. I think we did yeah. this one because it's in such a nice condition. Yeah, yeah. So, on YouTube, go and have a look. There's a demo of Jack Kendrew playing this guitar. Jack's a great player, um, and he usually does the guitars we have justice. So um, check him out and his endeavours, of course. Um, bit of oxidisation on those two springs, but otherwise. You could be mistaken for thinking it's just come out of the factory. Um, 57P base, anodized guard. We have the original case for this. Um, it's in very good original condition. Um, I've had a lot of interest in this one, as you can imagine. Um, I mean, the condition is almost unbelievable. I think that's why we've had quite a lot of inquiries because people almost can't believe. Um, and there's a bit of, bit of wear on the neck there, a bit of wear on the body from buckle wear. Um, but it is what it is. Just a good example, 57P base. 66, base 5. 
So um, the five string, um, these have the extra string at the top um, on this model. Um, but it's, I mean, it's in the condition you'd expect for the age. Uh, candy apple red, so original candy apple red finish with matching headstock. Um, and it didn't last long because, well, I think it's pretty obvious why it didn't last long. It's not, it's, I don't think it's probably the most aesthetically pleasing um, guitar to some. It looks really stretched. It does, it, it looks yeah. stretched, that's the thing. Um, and I like weird guitars, so I like it, but um, <laughs> not everyone's going to. Um, but yeah, no, not a nice thing. And then we have really, really player's grade strat here. Um, which is a 1960 Strat, circa 1960. Most of the parts dated around there, um, but it's uh, refinished body, reprofiled neck. Um, there are some other minor things. Um, I think this pickup's been rewound. The screw holes have been enlarged on the pit guard. Um, the knobs are repro, um, but yeah. It is nonetheless a 1960 Strat. It's got its original Selma case. Um, so it was uh, obviously an, uh, originally a British issued thing. Assu well, assuming that case was original and not married later, but we're going to assume it's the original Selma case. But um, yeah, player's great example. Got a 57 Strat on the right. This guitar comes with its original case. It's completely original aside from the nut, but we do have the remnants of the original nut in the case. Um, so that's a, that's a really cool thing um, and a good match for the 57 base we've got coming up. This one on the left, it is a refinish, but it's a very good refinish. It fooled me when it first came in. Um, I sort of quite a lot of uh, detective work looking at this one. Um, but everything is original apart from the refinish. It's got its original case, US issued case. Um, it was bought, purchased by the... It's from a deceased estate, but the purchase in 1986, huge Hank Marvin fan. He bought it from a, a guitar dealer up in Newcastle. Um, unfortunately, sold to him as original, but it's not. It's a refinished body. Um, so, yeah, two lovely, lovely strats there, 57 and a 61, along with the player's grade ones. We, we've got things of every budget. You know, we've got an, a, a original 50s. We've got a refinish, um, the next refinished on this one, by the way. So a refinished 61 Strat, and then the 1960 Players Grade Strat. And then um, this is really cool. I love offsets. Um, who doesn't? Who doesn't? A lot of people don't. People who don't are wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, so 66 um, used to be more white than it is now. Um, custard is what we called yeah. it in our last video and who doesn't <laughs> love custard um, with the matching headstock some of the logos gone missing um, but this one has its original case it's just a really cool guitar it's got loads of mojo um, and yeah I, th I think it was imported from the states about 10 years ago um, from my memory of what the vendor said to me but he bought it off a, off a UK based dealer um, who who who'd then back then recently imported it in so yeah good example uh, a cool telecaster deluxe 70s um won't cover that too much i think they're great big fat strat type headstock uh, wide range pickups and is this the best telly we've got in the sale one of the it's really nice and it is really cool yeah and the the reason i like it so much is because it's got real Gibson vibes going on. Um, yeah, it's it's that um yellow refinished junior that we had. Well I think it's literally that junior but a telly. Yeah. That's how it it sounds really silly, but that's how it feels. So this is a Dale Wilson master built guitar. They sell for lots. <laughs> lots. <laughs> um I think they're nine nine thousand pound plus for a new one now. Oh, um so this is fairly modern as well. Um but you've got the TV yellow finish, the P90, and the Les Paul Junior, I guess, type shell guard. Maybe that's what's doing it. It's yeah. the yellow and the guard. So I think I think this has been very inspired by a Les Paul Junior TV TV Junior. Um, it's got the rosewood neck as well. 
and it's just a really well made guitar lightweight um lightweight mahogany body um of course you know mahogany's not that often used on on fender guitars so it really has that Gibson body look, but on a Fender guitar, sounds incredible, but, uh, but I think you want it to sound incredible, and it's a great player. But um, Dale Wilson, really well-regarded master builder. Um, so, yeah, that's um, that's another nice Fender coming up. And then just next to it, we've got the Nile Rogers Strat to get all your funk tones going. So this is the Relict one, um, artist-associated, so always great potential investment as you often get bored with me saying but um <laughs> it's true um and then we've got a 60 69 i think yeah i was pretty sure really Check trying to think of them as well I'm, I'm pretty sure it's 69 not 68 but anyway it's type one um this is heavily players grade refinished um it's it does have a lot of issues have a look at the uh, uh, the um the catalogue description, but it's a really nice weight thing. Body and neck are okay, you know, in terms of originality. The, bo the body has had uh, been refinished, but with dowled holes, obviously someone's had it as a standard Telecaster at some point. But, uh, yeah, it's um, a good player's grade thing. We had a lot of interest in it, actually, because I think, you know, it could be a, a steal for someone who's after a vintage, um, a vintage thin line without paying... The big the big money for them um so that basically covers fender guitars um as you can see we've got some gibson guitars behind here um again you can see these all in the catalog but um that is a cool um 60s so mid to late 60s um pickups have been replaced and the pots have been replaced so i can't accurately date it especially with these serial numbers being all over the place in this era um replace pickups like I said, um, bear, I, I'm pretty sure they're bare knuckles. Check the catalogue, um, but I'm pretty sure they are off the top of my head. Um, and yeah, it's a it's a good looking thing. Odd stinger there, possibly possibly the nice guy can see there's a hairline there, possibly concealing some kind of a crack or something. But um, it's a cool thing. So yeah, mid to late sixties. Um, it's a skinny nut, so it's definitely it's it's sixty six at the earliest. Um, and then a Warren Haynes, one of the early run of 500, Warren Haynes 335. Um, the guitar he was known for using in Government Mule and all of his other projects. So that's a cool thing. Um, we got some great Les Paul Customs in this cell. Um, so there, there's the first of the Les Paul Customs. Um, so that is a 73. I think so, yeah. 73, Cherry Sunburst. It's had a neck repair, but otherwise um, the bridge is replacement, but otherwise it's all there. And there we have, that's an R9. That was also, this is also a late arrival, so um, probably didn't see this in the, any consignment updates. Maybe one of the later ones, possibly. Might have been the last one, maybe. maybe. the last one, but um, a few dings on this one, but otherwise... Lovely condition, very expensive to buy new these days. So, um, you know, a, a, a used one, uh, potentially good money. Um, and then we have a couple of F uh, Gibson Custom. Um, so this is a collector's choice. This is the Tom Schultz, the Boston guitarist. Uh, Tom Schultz, collector's choice. This guitar sounds phenomenal. Yeah, it, it, it does. It sounds <laughs> incredible. Um I would go as far to say that this is one of the best sounding Les Pauls, in my opinion, for the type of music I like to play. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's the best sounding Les Paul in the world, um, because one person will say another one sounds better than another, because we all like them for different things. But personally, um, it helps that it's got a Demacio, so it's huge gain um, and very creamy neck, clean tones. Um, so that is that is right up my alley. Um, and yeah, Relict is, is a copy of Tom Schultz's original. Um, so limited numbers. Off the top of my head, I can't remember how, how limited they are, but there were not many. Um, and then next to that one, we have a Gibson Custom. I hope I'm getting this right. Mark Bolan. Is it the Mark Bolan? Yes, it is. Um, so based on his, I think his, his uh, original guitar, which was a 
gold top with a Gibson Les Paul custom neck. So you've got the black finish custom neck and then the shabbily finished what was what would have originally been a gold top guitar, but again a replica of his, so with all the all the correct wear. Um but it's another it's another great playing guitar, and if you're a big Mark Bolan fan, it's a good option. They made I think they made around three hundred with the first the initial run being the relict ones, so this is this is number twenty one in the run. Um, so uh, you know, an early, mm. early, you know, first twenty. You often tend to find, especially with these artist guitars, the first run. So usually, sort of first ten are the most valuable. Then the then the next up to twenty, twenty five, uh, or you know, the first half seem to be the the next valuable. Then the later runs. So. Um, it's just how the collecting game works. Well, issues, I think it's because you know? usually like the first 10 are given to the artist and associated, you know, like managers and things like that, aren't exactly. they? So it's, they're yeah. rarely going to come onto the market. Yeah, I mean, I remember a few years back we had a Martin Eric Clapton that was serial number two. Oh, um, yeah. And the story goes it was actually destined for Eric Clapton, but he refused to take it because he was happy with, his, happy with number one. Um, and it's happened to be, I think it's the first Sunburst one out of the factory being number two. So anyway, 1960 Guitar Center, um, special run. Um, it's a Gibson Custom R0. Um, we've got a 1984 Gibson Custom with Cala. This is in amazing condition. I, I, I just love these tuners that they did around there. Just this really gimmicky. It's a bit, a bit like the robot tuners, really. But um, the, the gimmick of the day. But... Uh, um, but very, very divided opinions on these, but in great condition with the original protector case. Um, this is really cool. Gibson Custom. Um, so it's a 56, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. No, 54. So 54. So R4, but with a sunburst top. Looks great with the bird's eye mapling in there on the finish. And this is our other Gibson Les Paul Custom which is 7475. It's no earlier than 74 because it's got the patent stamped pickups rather than the stickers. Um, but a really cool example, some hardware changes, but a good thing. And the Gibson Custom Spotlight reissue. So this is an original Spotlight. It's the, um, the reissue that they did, uh, Gibson Custom did. So um, yeah, a great example in good condition so we did have two v2s in the sale um but unfortunately one got pulled because it was bernie marsden's um so if you wanted a v2 then this is the one you're going to have to settle for i'm afraid this time um so this is in the natural finish made in 1980 um in good original condition with the case and there is the guitar we were looking for <laughs> it's the uh the marshall set golden anniversary set um a collaboration between gibson and marshall um they didn't make many of them at all and so we've got the blues breaker amp with the gibson guitar i waffled on about that in a previous video so i won't i won't go too much in detail and then over here we've got some um we've got a gibson that's an r6 that one gold top um good condition from a Big deceased estate of guitars we've got, so you've probably seen that at some point as well. Um, and then we've got another R9. Is it an R9 or an R0? It's R8. Not, it's an R8. I had a one in three chance. <laughs> I got it wrong every time. I mean, let's be fair. I'm trying to remember the details of how many guitars? There's a lot of guitars. There's a sea of them. And then double again upstairs. Um... And then we've got a, a Gibson Custom Shop, Les Paul Custom here as well. Um, so, yeah, some cool things. And then one of the rarest we have is a, a one-off guitar made for Neil Penner, the Gibson Sales Rep 1969 L5C Special. So that's a, that is a rare, rare guitar made for the best-selling rep at the time. Um, nice thing comes with its original case uh, a, a small amount of paperwork um, and then we have the remainder of the gibson guitars the non-vulnerable gibsons over here 
Um, so we've got Les Paul Standard, so J45, Chet Atkins. We've actually got three Chet Atkins models in the cell. And they're all different as they're well. They're all different, yes. Yeah, so we, we, we're, we're trying to complete the set. <laughs> um, we've got the Orville Les Paul Standard, the Orville Les Paul Junior. This is an amazing thing. I mean, if you want the Les Paul Junior, but you don't want to pay um, Gibson Les Paul money, that is cool. Yeah, definitely. Nice weight. Nice. If you if you prefer a a a, a, a nineteen sixty ish neck rather than a, a a fat fifty eight to fifty nine neck, um, that's the one. Uh, TV Junior finish. Generally, it's in good condition. Um, made in Japan under under Gibson license, but they made a fine guitar. Um, so yeah, good thing there. Um, and we've got the just more more cool things the s345 we've got a um again 74 at the earliest with the pickup type that's on there but uh, so a mid 70s es335 in walnut we've got the es135 here which from memories from the 90s one of the 90s ones uh gibson bfg but one with the tremolo so that was the very last year they made them um cool black finish there we've got the relentless energy drink um <laughs> sg there um which has got sort of a probably uh, monty's guitars was involved with this one we're making some high output pickups for for a guitar that relentless uh did for some promotion um really good condition amazing condition with the original case this one so this is a 78 i think 79 79 lesbian standard in the tobacco burst finish good thing um the SGGT, that's got the look, you're into your cars, that's your guitar. And then, always good to have a Firebird. Um, we've got a lefty, so one for you left-handed players, because you're always, always asking when we're going to get left-handed stuff in. There you go. It's got a neck repair, but otherwise it's, it's in pretty good condition. Um... So that's a Les Paul special, 70s. Small block inlays, which I think are a cool look. And then we've got the L6, um, L6S Deluxe here. So these are two, these are two sort of very Marmite models. So there's the L, um, yeah, L6S Deluxe model. Carlos Santana, amongst other players, were very well known for using these. And then, Last but not least, we have the Sonex. I think they're cool. I think they look cool. They're heavy, but they look cool. <laughs> and we've got some more custard going on there. So love a bit of custard. If you want to, uh, <laughs> if you want more guitars for your custard collection. We've got plenty of custard guitars in this cell. Um, so that pretty much covers the Gibson range. We've got. Um, We've got a couple of more. We've got a couple of more good Gibson acoustics behind the cabinets here. We've got a nice um, SJ two hundred in natural just over the back there. Um, our cameraman can just about <laughs> get there. Shaky arm, shaking, getting a tired arm. <laughs> um, and then next to that, on the right hand side, we've got a um, Cheryl Crow model. Um, that sounds great as well. Which does sound amazing. We've, we we had to do a comparison between three Gibsons for someone yesterday for the best sound. And the Cheryl Crow hands down won. And we're kind of pleased it did because it is a, it's a more expensive custom model. And you'd like to think that it would outperform, it would outperform yeah. the others. And it actually does because it's not always the case, but it is in that case. Um, and then, yeah, let's finish Gibson. With the 58V, with its striking oxblood lined case, original case. So, this is really is the highlight of the sale. Um, there, as you can see it, um, you've all had chance to look at the condition of this lot. Um, it's been refinished. It's had its neck reprofiled, but everything else is pretty much there. And um, the nut's been replaced, obviously, and the the tuner buttons have been replaced, but. Yeah, everything is there, um, and sort of going back to the history of this guitar. So, 
Uh, it's being sold by the vendor who purchased this guitar in 1990. It was imported into the States in 1989. Um, it was bought by a chap called Julian Marsh, who we happen to know, um, from John Sprung at the American Guitar Centre in 89. Now, I arrived into work only this morning and had an email from a gentleman claiming to be uh, a previous owner of this guitar. Um, and it was fascinating to read and he sent me a bit of the history, but he's going to give me some more information, which we will upload to the catalogue listing for what it's worth. These things always happen last minute, but he, he obviously found the guitar while looking around online um, and he's always wondered where it ended up and he's delighted to find that it suddenly appeared somewhere because he always wondered what happened to it. So he bought the guitar in 1967 from a pawn shop in Newport News in Virginia. Now, the significance of that is this guitar was shipped to the Thomas Piano Company in Newport News in 1958. So where we were assuming that the guitar was sold by the original owner, to Thomas Sprung at the American Guitar Center. It wasn't, we are going to assume, they were the ones who pawned the guitar in 1967 when it was bought by the chap that emailed me this morning. Now, yeah, $125 is what he paid for it. So in a pawn shop in Newport News. And then in 1988, he decided to let it go. Um, he was he was in a, a personal position where actually he could have um, benefited from the money more so than having the guitar. And so he traded it to a very good high school friend who had just got into buying and selling guitars or buying and selling instruments. Um, so he let the guitar go to his friend and then that is when, um, and that was also in the Newport News area, and then that is when it moved on to um, John Sprung, and then the rest is the history that we have documented in our description. So um, he's got a few other details about the guitar that he's going to let us know, but he's pretty much said that everything that we've said about the guitar and its, it's, um, its write-up is true as he knows it as well. So and he was quite amazed at how bang on we got the description. So um, it was pleasing to hear that. But there it is. Um, uh, you know, this, is, this isn't this is a reissue. This is an original 58 Gibson Flying V, one of the rarest Holy Grail guitars. Um, and like I said, it's got the original case, which is worth a fortune in its own right. Um, but this guitar is coming up for sale on the 5th of September. Um, it's like I said, it's well documented. It's in Tony Bacon's book. Um, the the owner from '67, he was aware that this guitar was in Tony Bacon's book because he was shown it by a friend in the late '90s, and he was like, "Wow, that's my guitar. I wonder where it is now." So he assumed it was probably in the UK, and here it is. So whereas we thought we had the history from '88, we do actually know its history from '67, which is amazing. Apparently somewhere there is a letter from Gibson in 1968 that addresses the issue of the serial number. So, because the serial number has been re-stamped, but it does cover that in the letter. But we're until we're not really going to include that in the description until we've seen more. But um, yeah, quite interested to see the rest of the history. We will we will tell more. Um, but um, yeah. Uh, a cool story there. Um, you'll see behind the cabinet we've got some other acoustics, we've got some Collings um, now that we've finished on the 58V. Um, so a cool thing coming up on the 5th of September. So um, at the back there we've got some Collings guitars. Um, a good selection there. Um, we've got the cutaway version there, we've got the mahogany version over here and then we've got the smaller bodied one. Um, uh, uh, Selma um, Eddie Freeman conversion. Um, roughly 1933 converted uh, gypsy jazz guitar. Uh, we've got a McPherson acoustic next to that. Um, very high end, incredibly well made. Madagascan Rose with that one. Sounds incredible, cool design. Um, British built, arch top. Uh, Andy Manson, um, well known, based in Devon. Um, 
obviously with the with the Manson's guitar store connection as well, or you know Hugh Manson should I say, um, and then we've got the very fine John Buscarino arch top there from 1995. That's a Monarch model, um, a lovely guitar, superb condition, a joy to play. I'm not a jazz guitarist, but I can tell it's 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 a great thing. Again, video Jack playing this one and a lot of the other guitars we've just covered. Make sure you look at the V video. It, it sounds. It sounds great. Sounds great. And, and saying it, it sounds, sounds great kind of you know, undersells it a bit. Yeah, yeah. You just think of think of all these terms that you can come up with, but it just yeah, it's got that grit, you know. Um, scrongle. Scrongle. Yeah. <laughs> How do I add more scrongle? Um, another Collins acoustic uh, artist related. Uh, Scott Henderson Jackson from eighty. Is it eighty six? Oh yes. Around then, <laughs> mid eighties. I love Jackson guitars, and that's my birth year. It's meant to be. Meant to be. How are you a fan of purple? Don't know. Get you are an A. <laughs> Danish P. Where is he? One for him. Um, cool thing though. Cool color. Great guitar. Um, and we've got lots of memorabilia here as well. We've got more things from the Michael Chapman collection. Um, uh, all the memorabilia is quite hidden actually under this cabinet. While I've got a blanket over the top, but. Uh, yeah, some things from the Michael Chapman collection. We've got some really cool memorabilia. We've got some really cool autographs and things like that. Um, really amazing Jimi Hendrix autograph, which with, with full authentication. Um, some cool posters. Um, Elvis Costello original poster there, amongst other things. And then, yeah, let's have a quick fly around the rest of the room because, um, like I said earlier, I'll make this brief, ha-ha. <laughs> um, but uh, I won't tell you how long we've been running for. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to know. Um, so we've got some really cool um, acoustics here. Uh, Terry Pack acoustics, very high end. Um, we know Terry actually quite well, um, and uh, yeah, designed these guitars. Fantastic quality guitars. So have a look at these in the catalogue if you want a very good um, high end acoustic by the maker. We've got those there. Um, we've got, um, this is a good uh, Gibson Les Paul standard um, from 89. Um, so yeah, good condition. Um, good condition for age, I'll say. Um, but in terms of no brakes or anything like that. Another cool Flying V here, um, a HP, uh, Pro HP. Um, so it's got the chamfered neck yeah it's really different isn't it yeah so um but robot tuners if they stay on there i'd be surprised because most people take them off but um i've i have used them before and i'm not a fan i don't i don't i'm i'm, I'm not i'm not really interested in them but I have used them before and they do work, but I can't see how they'd ever work in a live setting. Maybe they it's... work really well, but it's you're so used to. I mean, right, this is coming from like not having enough experience with using them, but you're so used to just grabbing a machine head and turning it. Whilst you do that with those, you just... yeah. oh, uh, I you're broke. Yeah. <laughs> um, Gibson Les Paul Deluxe, which you'll all notice has humbucker pickups, not mini humbuckers, so it's been um, a top refinish. Um, pickups changed. Uh, mojo pickups i think that's right and there. they i will say that um they sound great they do sound great it's had some different tuners on at some point yeah um gibson deluxe tuners now on there um but yeah it's i guess players grade i think it's a bit of an overused term these days but just put my cloth back over just, to... Just for the audience, why do you put those cloths on there, Luke? I know why. The cloths are on there. <laughs> it drives me nuts because it makes the room look not as good having these cloths on there. But, and this is a bit of advice if you're unaware, if you buy a cheap stand, which we had to buy en masse, so we couldn't go and buy a thousand... <laughs> like 40 quid stands. 40 pound stands, <laughs> so stands a lot of these stands um and you'll find it most stands that are under 30 pounds the rubber eats into nitro finishes and it does it quickly um so just 
make sure when you're buying stands you're buying something that won't eat into nitro or you're at least putting something over so we use polishing cloths to keep the finish away from the rubber just in case so it's only really going to affect nitro finishes um, and where les pools and things sit on the on the stands we put these uh cloths over to protect them because um we have a duty of care um as temporary custodians or agents of selling these things so um, the last thing we want is a is a buyer to receive a guitar with nitro burn across it, um, so that won't happen here. So if you do buy a guitar that has nitro burn across it, it's because the previous owner um, did not realise. Well, so we've had some come in with it as yeah, well. Exactly. Sometimes so, it's really bad. Um, but again, ask for a condition report, and you'll know um, whether that's happened. But just a word of warning: if for those of you who don't know, just be careful with guitar stands because. And it can happen with the neck hangers as well. They can eat into the neck. That's right. So that's why yeah. you will sometimes see it. People say, oh, look, it's got a cigarette burn. No, it's probably a hanger burn. Um, mm. So um, just be really careful because um, it could damage your pride and joy. Um, so there we go. Um, we've got a Gibson Herb Ellis here. Another Gibson Les Paul Standard. Um, that's a 120th anniversary one. So um, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea spec wise but um yeah they've got a, i think the, the profile's fairly comfortable not everyone likes it um the sg the 70s sg there the sg2 um i'm sure it's an sg2 um a good good original example um we've got the 61 reissue sg unfortunately it doesn't have its original case why i don't know um so there is that one there. Um, next to that is the Gibson Midtown Custom with the Bigsby. So that is probably, I guess that would be the highest end model of that series. Um, so Bigsby Trem, uh, Ebony Board or Rich Light Board, I think they are, uh, block inlays and another Chet Atkins. As you can see, this is the, I can't remember the exact model designation, I think it's the SSE or SST. Um, with the with the star inlays, um, uh, Gibson Hummingbird Avant Guard, Gibson Chet Atkins Tennessean, um, Gibson Les Paul Traditional, one of two that we've got in the sale. There's another one in Sunburst just on the end there. Um, Gibson J45 Deluxe, and this is probably the nicest playing 70s Gibson Acoustic J45 with Deluxe I think I've ever... I've ever come across <laughs> the the quality for acoustics around this time some of the electrics people would say as well of course but the acoustics in particular i think are very very is very sketchy but that's that is a good one in my opinion um <laughs> just tap that on the end yeah, of everything i'm always going to say in my opinion because <laughs> i won't want you to buy it on basic what, what i'm saying now and then you'd be disappointed i don't want disappointment um there's the third of the chet atkins we've got in the cell um, that's the skinnier nut version for the more contemporary guitarist rather than the classical nut one that we showed you earlier. Um, and then we have a 77 Melody Maker. And again, bro broaching the 70s subject, this is far better quality, in my opinion, than any <laughs> of the 60s ones. Um, so people get hellbent on saying, oh no, you've got to get a 60s one, not a 70s one. The quality in 70s one wasn't that good. I have never played a, I mean, this might be an exception to the rule because I haven't seen loads of the 70s melody mm. makers, but um, this is, this just wipes the floor of any 60s melody maker I've played. The 60s ones, they feel, to me, they feel a bit lightweight, they feel a bit cheap. Um, I mean, they were a cheap guitar, they were a low-end guitar, but... This is a really nice reissue. It's in great condition, um, and yeah, I think I think it's got a cool look, double cut, um, and it's in good condition with the case. It's like with seventy strats, isn't it? And I think we've said this in the last tour. It's the bandwagon is they are all rubbish. Yeah, but we've had quite a few that are pretty good. Yeah, play them. You can't. You don't know until you play them. You can't yeah. see something online and say, "Oh, it's seventies or discounted is rubbish." It probably won't be. I've played more good 70s strats than I have 60s ones, for example. That is controversial. In your opinion. <laughs> but it's my opinion. Well, yeah, it is my opinion. Because it, it's 
it's different. It's different for everyone. Yeah, of course um, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I've played a lot of very bad, high quality, high end guitars, modern guitars that are made of all the modern tooling and precision. Um, so yeah, um, I think try for yourself. Um, but that's not to say I haven't played some great early sixties guitars. Mm. Um, but yeah. Um, anyway, less of my opinion. Um, so we've got um, a Gibson Modern. Never really caught on as a model, but uh, there's a reissue, I guess. Um, this really is a good guitar, high-end modern guitar. So this is a US St. Vincent. It sounds out of this world um, and it feels good. This It's the kind of quality you would expect from USA made Ernie Ball. Um, even the Sterling ones are great. I mean, the Sterling St. Vincent model is a really good guitar, but this is just something else. Mm -hmm. um, it's a beast. So if you, um, and I quite like the aesthetic, but again, I like weird things. Um, <laughs> so if you like the offset aesthetic um, or the asymmetric thing, um, yeah, go for that. It's a really unassuming thing, I think, though. Yeah. Because like, it doesn't look like it's... Uh, doesn't look like it's going to be a great guitar, but then you actually play it and you go, oh, actually, yeah. wow. <laughs> you think, wow, and it's really nicely balanced. I mean, especially sitting down. Oh, it's very out tune. Great tuning. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> but it all works. A good working trem, great gold foil pickups. Um, and, yeah, you don't even need to like the Sim Vincent. It's a, it's a good guitar, but she is a great, great player, and she's a f fantastic songwriter. Um Saw some footage of her at Glastonbury, I think it's Glastonbury Festival, um, and uh, from a few years, was it this year or last year? Can't remember, but she was great. Um, Ovation, another one, the Axe. It's the Deacon, isn't the Deacon, it? The Deacon, this one, not the Breadwinner. Um, they are quite similar, but again, I like the look of these. These always sound great, play great, but... Like many OV, like the Ovation Acoustics, not for everyone. Mm -hmm. This isn't for everyone. Um, and then I'm going to skim over a little bit here. Um, yeah, things do jump out a little bit of order along here. but Yeah, they do. So this isn't necessarily in sale order, but a, a, a modern Ivan as George Benson, very well. Um, team J Craft and in inverted commas. So um, a good thing there. Uh, Rickenbacker 620. Um, Gretsch Chet Atkins. Um, I think that's a Tennessee and Rose model. I'm trying to I'm trying to pick all this out of my out of my, out of the depth of my memory. Are you telling um, me that you can't remember the exact details of all 600 plus guitars? I try. <laughs> of every single one. <laughs> I try. Um, that's the Wilson K4 Kinton. Really cool guitar. Um, all the electrics work amazingly with the rocker switches. Um, Epiphone Blues Hall Deluxe, they're good things. Um, I think you'll probably agree, one of the best bases in the cell. Oh, definitely. This thing's yeah. great. Yeah. It's heavy. We're not going to... It's, gonna... it's really heavy. <laughs> yeah, so if you don't like heavy bases, avoid. But, you know, 1981, through neck, um, got, you know, the, the, the PJ Hybrid. Um, could be a good band name, that, PJ Hybrid. PJ Hybrid. hybrid. Um, a bit close to PJ Harvey, I suppose. Yeah, it but. is. Yeah, well, that's probably why I'm thinking that. But uh, yeah, it's um, they're, they're phenomenal bases. Um, the scale, the scale is quite long, um, but really good high output thing, um, and well made, Japanese made Vox, um, Epiphone ES one seven five Premium. So um, these have the satin finish. They have Gibson pickups in as well, genuine Gibson pickups. So they were a higher end model. They're fantastic guitars if you like your jazz box thing. Um, we got an early 30s Epiphone there. Um, some lovely British nostalgia with the Vox Clubman bass from the 60s there. Some old ovations. This guitar is this this is great actually. It's a, it's a modified modified Ibanez like the ES175 copy. The exact model designation I can't remember, but it's it's had a an old an, an original old Bigsby added, 
um, and um, I think I think the pickups are an upgrade as well. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a very well upgraded, but a, a very good guitar in the first place. Um, G and L L one thousand bass, they're cool. Just a simple design, one pickup, good lightweight thing. Um, we've got a couple of really cool filed guitars. We've got the I have to remind myself that is the Othello acoustic. So a fellow acoustic there, and then we've got the pack leader. Um, so there were not many of these made with the Overland AMG pickups before they became EMG. So um, a good guitar. Um, File didn't make electric guitars really. They made these Terry Pack. We saw some of his guitars earlier actually. He was the designer, hence the pack leader name. Um, so that's a that's a cool thing. Um, a left-handed Patrick Eggel. Didn't realise we had a left-handed Patrick Eggel. <laughs> it's and amazing that it. it's not until you lie everything out you go, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Emerald, full carbon fibre acoustic there from Emerald Guitars in Ireland. This is one of two that we've got yeah, as One well. or two we've got in the sale. So this one, I believe, was actually made on St. Patrick's Day, um, as it says on the label. Is that the one? Yeah, made on St. Patrick's Day, day 2012. So, yeah. um, <laughs> I, didn't, yeah. I didn't notice that. <laughs> yeah, so a, a bit of an Irish thing. And then we've got some really cool high-end um, electrics here. Tom Anderson Guitar Works. Um, Paul Reed Smith, which needs some fret work. I oh, I yeah. can't even do it. I was going to straight the straight across the frets, <laughs> I'm just but saying it made me hair, yeah. hair on the oh yeah goosebumps it gives you. Um, and we got some more PRS guitars here. We got a really nice Sir uh, um, carved top standard. It's actually hand signed by John Sir on the back there. So this was a uh, this was a special order through. Um, I can't remember the store in the UK, but. Um, it's a it's a nice 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 thing um uh, japanese grecos and matis um if you go to the our youtube channel you can find there's a 50 guitar collection video and it covers all of these these are all from a deceased estate of 50 guitars a lovely chap i knew very well um who we've sold about 300 guitars for over the years but go and have a look um, at that video because this goes into more detail of these guitars we've got the iconic brian may red special um an 80s rickenbacker 360 um yeah um <laughs> uh parker fly um us parker fly it sounds great as well i had to test that for somebody yesterday it's the parker fly yeah yeah, yeah. it's really cool they always do they're great great guitars great shredders um Phenomenal necks. Um, we got a sitar guitar. So, yeah, that's um, a good studio guitar, I think that is. Um, we got a nice Adamas 12 string acoustic. Um, a couple, uh, we got a good range of Martin guitars. Um, behind the cabinet, we actually had a 59. Um, 59 d18 that's been refinished it's got repaired patch but otherwise it's a phenomenal sounding guitar so check that out in the catalog a 1959 martin d18 i think there's um, a video demo of it as well there is a video demo it's a historic video demo of that one somewhere on our youtube channel so have a look at that and then we've got a cool selection of uh, acoustics here we've got the ovation lx um that's another good ovation um, more Martin guitars. We've got the Ellie Cowboy Limited Edition Martin just here, next to the very good Martin bass. Um, and this is a really rare Martin Plectrum guitar. So um, a, a 1929 or 29, 27. Um, anyway, yeah. it's a rare I thing. I think it is 20s, isn't it? Yeah, um, 017 P, I believe that is. And then we've got a very, very high-end Phil Davidson. Look at that, Dreadnought. Had a lot of interest so in this, nice as you can see. imagine. It's really well made. Um, really high-end appointments. It's a cool thing. So we're going around the corner again. So much to cover. Um, are any of you bored yet? Um, <laughs> hopefully not. Um, some nice high-end ja uh, Hofner Jazzikas. Um, One more time. The very, very, very big, loud. 
Oh, there's a Jazzica. There we go. There's custard and then there's just like there's neon custard banana. There's, there's custard and then there's French mustard. French mustard. Um, <laughs> is it custard or mustard? Yeah, Tell us in the is, comments. <laughs> that is... That's 125th anniversary once so they must have done a colour range. I, I, my, my knowledge of Hofner guitars is not great, especially the modern ones. So um, they are... But they're, they're very good high-end guitars this is this is an interesting acoustic actually no maker don't know who it's by but the martin dreadnought idea but oh i was hoping it'd be in tune and you'd all go whoa but um <laughs> it's, it's a great sounding guitar so um the neck profile is it's a bit odd as in it's not traditional but um it is a nice big neck but it's a really well-made guitar. So have a look at that in the catalogue, 354. Um, so if you're coming to view, tomorrow, in fact, we're open for viewing. Um, have a look at that one. So viewing is tomorrow, which is the 1st of September. Viewing tomorrow, nine till five. Um, and then we're open again on Monday and the sale is next Tuesday. So please do remember the guitar sale is Tuesday. Um, electrical Guitar Company. Um, very inspired by um, Valino, John Valino guitars. Um, so they, that's their standard model. Um, so that's a that's a cool thing. Um, we got some overhead, overhead guitar company travel guitars. So these guitars basically fold in half, and you put them in your little bag, and they are the correct hand luggage size, so you can put them in your overhead locker. So. All you need to do is um, stuff your clothes in the sound hole, <laughs> fold it up, and away you go. What's really great as well is it's it's something that is it's obviously a bit gimmicky, isn't it? Yeah. But they both sound really good. Yeah. And they carbon, feel really good as well. Guitars, they're well made. They sound good. Um, they're a clever design, and. Um, they're obviously not designed to put your clothes in, but actually I think that's quite a good idea. Um, if you're the clover person that just needs a guitar, It's the Luke Hobbs patented packing yeah. technique. All you need is a pair of shorts, a couple of pairs of underwear, a couple of t-shirts, and you've got your weekend break away. So, um, yeah, less of that. You know what I'm doing after the auction. Um, so we have here the... Patrick Eagle, Los Angeles. These are cool. British, Britain's answer to PRS at the time, I guess. Um, so early 90s, 94 actually, mid 90s. Um, close enough. Um, and then we've got some nice, a nice guild, uh, Japanese made guild there from 2004. Um, that's sort of the Smoke Green anniversary reissue. Um, and some other other great guitars as we look around white penguin they do exist the fabled white penguin um the white falcon um a very well made famous renegade made in germany um under i guess this is when they were in uh, the which they are now the warwick stage so phenomenally well made guitars um We've got the Fretkin Green Label Yardbird, um, GNL Asset, so um, good guitar there. The James Tyler, um, probably one of the most divisive headstocks ever. Yeah, I don't, I don't like to say. I mean, I know I keep saying in my opinion, I don't like to say the worst because someone else might really like that. But mm. um, yeah, not a fan. But. They are very good guitars, regardless. Um, and then going back down we go. Um, we've got uh, Gordon Smith, a lesser spot model there. Um, that's the Graf model. Um, we've got the PRS, controversial PRS Silver Sky, John Mayer's signature. And that's in Lunar Ice Metallic. Uh, I, I know it's Lunar Ice whether it ends in metallic. Okay. Somebody correct me. Yeah. <laughs> Lunar Ice Metallic. It's a limited edition colour. They didn't make many in that finish, so that is a limited edition guitar. Um, 
another Patrick Eagle, the New York model there. That's a anniversary model. Um, so yeah, that's a good good guitar. I think that's the fifth anniversary model. Um, a nice Rickenbacker. This is the um, the John Lennon spec one, so the smaller smaller bodied short scale. Um, probably one of the best condition Burns Vibra artists you'll ever see in your life. I know there's lacquer checking, but we can forgive that. Just look at the plastics. I've never seen one like it. Um, original case. We've had lots of interest in that because these have become really collectible. Mm. Um, it's got the even got the original um, Burdens of Stockton retailer's label. Um, Trace Elliott T base. Um, made by Status Graphite. I had no idea such a thing existed until that came through the door. Um, so it's nice to learn something every day. Um, one of two Hofner Senator bases that we've got in the sale. Um, another Gordon Smith Burns Vibra Slim. Um, one of my favourite guitars in the sale is this Ivan as Blazer series because it won't really break the bank. Um, a few hundred pounds this will come in at. DiMarzio pickups. Um, really cool surf blue. I love my surf colours. Um, or I mean, it's not really surf blue, is it? It's sky blue, but um, it's nice and colourful. Nice neck, good quality Japanese made in 1982. So keep an eye out for those. Maybe a future collectible. I don't know. It's um, arguably a good alternative to the Tom DeLong, right? It's got the look, and I mean, okay, it's got two pickups, and I can see you look very upset me saying that, <laughs> but. <laughs> It's got one too many pickups, <laughs> but no, nah, if I had to have two Only pickups, one. <laughs> yeah. Great Instagram account, actually, only one pickup. So if you like only one pickup guitars, look on, go on Instagram and find only one pickup and you can see all the only one pickup guitars ever. It's one of my favourite pages. It's really cool. <laughs> um, they've actually, they've actually featured one of my personal guitars, which was my Tom DeLong <laughs> guitar in the past. So, um. Well, your actual one. Yeah, my actual one. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Um, uh, there's a Gretsch um, Jet, one of the Japanese made ones, so good quality. Um, a nice Levin Acoustics. Do not underestimate Levin Acoustics. Made in Sweden, you can pick them up for probably a third of the price of the, of the Martin equivalents. So if you ever get a chance to play a Levin, if you ever get a chance for a good deal on a Levin, buy it, you won't be disappointed. Obviously play it first because might have condition issues but um look at those definitely um we have um a hofner violin bass from that one dates from 74 i believe um hofner violin bass it's got a replaced board but um it's a it's a it's got the look it's got the mccartney thing going on um another leverson blade um these will always be a go-to Telecaster for me, although I, don't, I should really get one of these one day. Nash Guitars makes a great guitar, always really high-end pickups. Um, 2010, signed by the maker on the back, nicely relicked, always have good, great feeling necks. That's, a, uh, that's not too big, actually, it's a C profile, so some of his necks can be quite big. But um, yeah, that's a, that's a great looking um, Blackguard type guitar. You know, you said you always wanted to get one. There is a great auction coming up on the 5th of September. There is a great auction, but <laughs> I don't currently have room for another one. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice, but I'll leave it to you guys to buy the guitars. I'll just talk about them. Um, uh, yeah, we're just flying around here. Um, Korean made Squire. These are great, these Korean-made Squires, really good. There was a Korean-made Squire in the Bernie Marsden collection, and it was, um, he ended up using it on his Stax album exclusive, well, 90% of it, because it was just such a good guitar, and it, it was unexpected, but he did. Um, and it beat all the other guitars for the type, the, 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 the sound he needed at the time. So, yeah, um, look out for those, they're good. Um, a Gurian acoustic um high-end maker there um another blade a durango that's two, two, one of two durangos we've got in the sale 
Um, this is a great acoustic, the Mossman acoustic from America's the Flint Hills model, um, probably the most well-known model. And um, we've got a Hofner Club 60 in need of a lot of work, neck reset and what have you. Um, PRS McCarthy hollow body. They need no introduction. And then uh, PRS Studio, that's the S2 Studio. Um, another Orville Gibson, um, or that's not a Gibson, that's not a Gibson a branded one, but that is an Orville Les Paul Custom, so under license. Um, Vanquish, um, what is it, Legend, that's a very well made guitar, British made again, phenomenal quality. Um, Epiphone, nice early Epiphone Master built arch top from the 30s. <laughs> player um have any of the playing was better um nice early gretch anniversary a micro fetch wanderer first ever uh, well i've had some of the thumbs up uh micro frets um the later ones um but that is a that is a cool thing first ever vintage one we've had um we've got the guild arch top there um, this Pagelli arch top is just wild. Looks great. Really it's good. like, I think I said this in the consignment update that it's in. This is almost like the perfect example of when guitars can be art. Yeah, it is. How cool would that look on your wall? Well, that's it, isn't it? Looks it's like, you know, looks like a Picasso. Yeah, <laughs> a Picasso that you can play. A play um, Casso, if you will. Play Casso, God. <laughs> Until this video's been going on too long. Um, cool National Res. Um, bend Away. Pretty sure it's a Bend Away. Um, an exotic. Is that the exotic? That is the exotic custom strat. Um, again, great boutique USA strat types um, and other types they make. Um, a couple of JMC guitars, rare things, um, Sadowski, Jimmy Bruno model, Crimson, our friends at Crimson, the uh, Descendant model. I think this is one of their custom shop ones, um, so slightly higher end appointments. Um, maybe it was made by Ben Crow, who knows. Um, the hooky six string bass, um, which... I've got a lot of time for. I think they're good fun. I think they, they work well as a six string bass. They've got good string spacing as opposed to some of the Fender ones. Um, and then, yeah, we're getting to the end. This is only day one guitars. So in a minute, we'll quickly run upstairs and um, have a look around. But uh, uh, cool Rick and Backer bass. Another Emerald guitar. We saw one earlier. Oh, this one's got a really cool cutaway on the back, actually. Yeah, this 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 works. This works well. It looks really strange. Yeah, but it but it's so comfy. What's the name tune? Not tuned all of these yet. <laughs> we leave this to the punters. We it gives them something to do while they're here viewing. They tune all the guitars up for us. It is greatly appreciated. And it's very appreciated. <laughs> yeah, we don't have time to do it. Um, this is a brand new. It, this isn't brand new in terms of year, but it's box fresh it was old stock from a shop that shut down so this is a, essentially is a brand new or a new old stock um ernie ball music man cutlass and we have another one don't we uh, oh you're testing me i think so somewhere. pretty sure we've got another one somewhere if not we might have one on its way no there is another one somewhere in this room there's another music man cutlass I think, oh no, there's another music man. I think it's a Stingray guitar. Um, I can't actually see it, but we will. Um, It'll be here. It's here. Um, really cool Supro, really cool Tokai with a MIDI pickup. Uh, George Benson, we've got sat there. Um, the GB10 from the 80s. Really good guitars, those. Um, and some other great things. Oh, this is one of my, my favourite acoustics in the sale. 
Kincaid Brothers from Bristol, good local provenance, hometown of our cameraman, <laughs> not far up the road um, from us. <laughs> a well-made guitar but um yeah king k brothers are um they're well regarded makers um and a lot of people around this area use them for various things uh patrick eggle berlin model um i love this as well very quirky mate on um australian made got the original case cool thing We've got a couple of pedal steels as well. So made in a Kerno, made in Cornwall. Um, so Mr. Kerno makes these guitars, um, a very high-end lap steel guitars. So there's one of two we got in the cell and you even get a stool with it. Um, you see at the end here, we've got antique and classical guitars. This takes place on Friday the 8th of September. So we've got some lovely antique and classical guitars. Um, there's we we featured a Panormo in a previous mo uh, video, um, and some other early early parlor guitars. So keep an eye on that video, um, or keep a, or have a look at the previous videos where we featured those. Um, and again, you know all sorts of lovely antique guitars that are um, over, some are over a hundred years old. Um, so that will be on Friday the eighth. Of September. Some of these are hidden away in the cabinet area as well. They are, so the Panorama and things, they are in the cabinet area protected because they are um, quite valuable and need additional protection. Um, so, as I think that's us covering day one, so that's on the 5th of September. Um, so we've had a quick look round, or a quick look round, um, <laughs> a, a, uh, as quick as I could look round, um, some cool things. We've got that 58V, which uh, is probably the highlight of the sale, um, with the extra amazing information that we've unearthed. Um, then we go, so then we go into day two, which is part two guitars, um, which are guitars that we look at as more affordable. And essentially the cutoff we see is things that we value at, um, with a starting price at under £200. It doesn't mean they're all going to sell for under £200, but it's just a way to try and separate them. So um, to keep the days from being too big. Um, so day two, which is on the 6th of September, which will be the Wednesday, um, we'll have part two guitars, amps and pedals. So you'll see some amps down here. We've got a 60s Fender Showman um, Blackface 66 um we've got some we've got a really cool cornford um mk50 head up here on top of a pair of custom shop rumble um cabinets and then we've got you know a load of really cool interesting early and later um marshall heads plus 70s jmp um next to a jcm 800 reissue um a, a, an earlier uh, Marshall cabinet there but I think what we'll do is we'll have a wander up the stairs and we'll see what's up there upstairs cell room uh, we've got musical instruments on Friday as well other musical instruments that are non-guitar related so um, lots of violins double basses cellos woodwind strings um, brass percussion so if you are watching this and you're on our channel because you're into guitars but you're also into all sorts do check out our musical instrument catalog as well because we've got over 400 lots going on the friday on the 8th of september and you will find some wonderful things in there um and probably many examples of instruments that you already play um so have a look at that catalog um and as you can see this room is just full of things um we got we do have like i said the the more what we call affordable guitars here there are some really good things i'm not really going to go to all out and picking out um specific things because there's there is just too much to too much to feature but have a look at the catalog the day two of the auction and we have nearly 200 guitars in this um section um, of course you can come and view and 
you might find that hidden gem. Um, but we've got, you know, going back to Korean made squires, strats and things like that. There's a lot of that type of thing here, which are still, you know, very, very viable. Um, and essentially they are great guitars. Um, so as I mentioned, amps, we've got a big sea of amps, all sorts of amps, modern amps, old amps, um, great amps not so great amps <laughs> um you know vox ac30s from the 60s marshalls from the 70s um if if you want it we've probably got it or got something similar so have a look at that catalog um and then on the 7th of september we have guitar spares and studio equipment. So you will see around the perimeter of the room, if we just walk around, we've got all sorts of weird and wonderful um, studio and audio equipment. We've got synths, we've got um, digital pianos, we've got rack units, some that you've never seen before and some that are very popular examples. Um, a nice Roland Jupiter 80 there. Synth, well-regarded synth. We've got um, reel-to-reel -reel players. Uh, we've got power amplifiers. We've got things like this Yamaha. Um, this is a limited edition Centennial model power amplifier. Extortionately expensive new. I think these are around the equivalent of £10,000 new or something. Um, so all sorts of really, really um, interesting things. Um, and I guess like a lot of people say it's good toys um you know we've got these air synths these are good fun um you know um and again some more reel to reels some studio vox reel to reels um we've got loads of reel to reels in this we do we've for, got quite a lot we usually have one or two we've got about five this time yeah we've got, probably got more than that um we've got a, a nord an old stage three. This is um this is in excellent condition, excellent working order with its box. Um, and then uh, we had a, a a clearance from a, a studio. Um, so we got a lot of a lot of studio equipment, a lot of very high end studio equipment, particularly in this area of the cell room, um, with some really high end rack units um, and preamps patch bays i mean these patch bays these are a thousand pound new each so you know they're a good, a good opportunity to um, upgrade your studio the clearance with the studio equipment we've got a lot of really good high-end microphones um that came in um particularly the neumann microphones we've got some royal labs um microphones some bock microphones um so a really good selection of tube mics um all from a high-end home studio all well looked after um so keep an eye out for those of you into the the audio and studio thing um and, and a potential opportunity not to be missed so that's all on the thursday of the sale uh, on the 7th of september and then going back to the 6th i mentioned we got pedals so lots and lots of pedals so we'll have a on the viewing days we'll have an ask to view uh operation going on um but as you can see the these shelves are just full of some really cool pedals really cool gadgets um you know we got early color sound pedals um we've got that's the color sound overdriver um and yeah we just got um you know ram said big muff um early tube screamers um so it's really really is worth having a look at look at those um uh, lots of really um early collectible boss things like the boss chorus ensemble um the vt1 voice transformer um we've got a slow gear in here somewhere um slow gear sg1 um i think there's a spectrum in there as well there's a spectrum sp1 um so yeah we've got we've got something for everyone in this section um you know some of the early ibanez stuff phase two um and Akai, i don't see these that often the shredder matic 
these are you know that's not necessarily a highly valuable pedal but um you just don't see them around they're good fun um yeah and as you can see we've just got a huge sea of this kind of thing so the only thing section we didn't really cover is the guitar spare section which is in a uh, is in a bit of an awkward place to show you in the building um so there are lots of lots in that section um a treasure trove of spares parts accessories for guitars so have a look at those um there might be something there to complete your projects lots of bodies lots of necks not lots of bits and pieces books as well um to add to your archive so that covers everything for um the video today um we've had a good look around great tour of the cell room um with all the lots we got coming up on that auction the 5th 6th 7th and 8th of september um, remember we are on public view as of tomorrow which is the 1st of september so nine till five tomorrow then we're back on monday the 4th of september mm. nine till five we've got some other videos um that have been the, the most recent ones that are going that have gone out where jack has jack kendrew has demoed some of the guitars we've got so go back and watch those videos um some great examples of what some of these guitars sound like and it may influence your decision of whether to bid or not you, you never know which way it's going to go but um have a look at those videos um a good selection there you will see some of the bernie marsden guitars that have been demoed there we're going to leave them up there just so you can see them like i said earlier sadly um bernie's passing last week we have withdrawn that section from the sale or a postponement um just as a mark of respect more than anything else um so we will have a, a future date coming up for those um uh, please do ask for your condition reports um if you're interested in anything check the catalog auctions.gardenholgate.co.uk um follow us on all our social media channels at guitar auctions on instagram guitar auctions at garden holgate for facebook we're on tiktok as well so find us there if that's your thing subscribe to our mailing list we will um always do weekly updates of things that are going on you'll always be notified of youtube videos through that mailing list but most importantly subscribe to our channel like this video to help us out and hit the bell icon for future uploads um, so you'll be notified straight away if you like our content and want to come back for more the first video back after this sell I'll be will be our first consignment update. So if you like the consignment update videos, um, hit that bell icon and you'll be notified about the first one to come up. Um, we've got a really cool collection of guitars, um, an artist related collection as well. So um, that's coming in imminently and it's probably the first thing I will feature. I think there's around 50 guitars in the collection. So look forward to that one um so thanks for joining us today um it's been great to take you around the cell room so you can see um what we've got going on um but if you like come down and have a look in person we're welcoming everyone with open arms public viewing it's a public auction so you can come and bid in person you can bid online leave commission bids you can book phone lines um all the all the ways that you're very that some of most of you'll be used to with auctions um, those of you who aren't, please get in touch and we will talk you through the process if you would like um, to bid on anything in the sale. So, like I said, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th September, we will be back next week with the Hexic sale um, and really look forward to seeing you all then. Until next time, I'm Luke Hobbs from Gardner Holgate Auctioneers in Caution, Wiltshire, UK, and we'll see you soon.